current and future challenges that we need to head. Um, again, like yesterday, I had didn't have much time to prepare this talk, um, which is mostly, I'll explain later why, I, why this happened here. Um, this is also the same, and I just say what I do in Debian Edu. I started as a contributing member, developer. Then we discussed setting up an, an archive, um, bef a proper archive suite, and so I was one of the people proposing DUCK, the Debian archive suite. I became FTP master in Debian Edu, and then I started managing the edge release, so I'm um, also a release manager in Debian Edu. So that's no formal team title. And again, Debian community still needs help. If somebody is interested, please talk to me. <laughs> um, the original idea of Debian Edu was to provide a whole a distribution with a complete platform for schools um, so that the schools can set up their systems with less um, work and therefore costs, maintenance costs, um, give schools a collection of services um, which is pre-configured and reduces the administration needs and also to increase the computer availability. Um, those are practical goals or ethical goals. goals I think you, you know them, you mostly share them. It's teach, um, teaching kids that sharing software can be legal and good. Um, how to use the software and to improve the software, to, um, um, to show the quality of free software and also to provide the environment in their native languages. By now, Debian Edu is, or by the end of this year, Debian Edu will be used in all schools in Extremadura, in many, many schools in Norway and Germany, um, more in Norway still than Germany. Norway, um, almost more than 50% of the schools, Germany, I have no, no numbers, but also way more than 100 schools, I think. And it's used in all the world. Yesterday night I learned it's also used in Argentina, in Mar de la Plata, which made me happy. I didn't know that before. <laughs> and it's also used in universities and offices. Um, the schools have some specific needs, uh, which I summarized here. It's low maintenance, out of the box setup, because mostly the administration is done by some teachers who do it as part of either their teaching or unpaid in the afternoon. Schools also often have little resources, old machines. Localization is important for schools. And there needs to be um, applications for kids to, to share, uh, to, to, to express themselves, to sh share what they do, um, and also for making multimedia or art or other stuff. Um, for older pupils, so the source code availability is also an interesting or good feature because they can change it and learn how, um, how software works. And schools also need ya Office, Java, Flash, and multimedia support more and more. Of course, many tests are now written either in Flash or in Java, so the browser needs to support that so that the exams can be done with the software. And this is all not so really school specific at all. Um, most stuff is also needed in offices or universities or I need to have the same needs. Um, Debian Edward Terra was the code name th um, which we released in, when was Edge released? In Easter, so it was we released in July 2007. Um, we had a simplified Debian installer where we trimmed down the number of questions even further. Um, we had, um, th we supported three architectures, i386, AMD64, and PowerPC. Um, the default desktop was KDE, so we, and we also provided um, the kiosk mode pre-configured, so there were different, um, if the users belong to the students group, there certain applications were miss missing, and the same for the teacher group. And we also built live CDs with Debian Live. The, the net, we have a network architecture um, so that um, 
when when the syst or the the whole network is installed, the 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 person doing it doesn't have to make up some IP addresses or um, every it's always the same that we have a router with a fixed IP address which is not part of Debian Edu. So we say get some router or usually sure the school has one. The main server always has this 10.022 IP address, always. And it always it has DNS, DHCP, Syslog, Mail, Proxy, LDAP, pre-configured and holds the home directories. And we have workstation, um, workstation and thin client server on the same network and um, thin clients on other networks behind that. And if, if you install, you can choose the type you want to install. You can either say, this is a main server installation, then it sets up the main server with this IP address. Or if it's a workstation, it sets up also this IP address for the workstation and a specific set of um, applications. And if it's a thin client installation, uh, thin clients, they get automatically are installed in a different subnet. Uh, yeah, this is what I said. The server has all these services listed. And the nice thing is that all works out of the box. So you, um, which really I makes the installation a lot faster. It's not, for, for people who have done it several times, it's easy to configure DNS and DHCP, but if you do it the first time, it's nice if it just works. And we have also have this web browser based admin tool Elvat, um, which is used to add users and machines to the system. So there's um, not so much work on the command line. There's still a bit left um, because we cannot get the, get the DHCP server and the DNS server configuration from LDAP. So you need to use command line tools for that. Um, but for adding machines to the net groups and adding users, you can use this web browser tool. We used to use Webmin um, up to Woody, but since Edge Webmin is not part of Debian anymore, so we came up with Elvat, which only has a subset of um, the Webmin features. And this is um, the, the, the most area of complaints at the moment, that teachers want to configure everything with a web browser and we don't have a good solution. Not yet, also not found in Lenny yet. Microphone is coming. Have you tried Gosa? We tried Gosa, but um, the problem with Gosa is that it stores the password in so that the users can access it. Gosa requires a, a server which has the um, no users on the server and that doesn't conform with our architecture. So for, for Lenny plus one, I have hope that we have, there are several tools coming up that we find something. But for Lenny, it looks like we will use Elvat again. Um, we also did some other um, changes to, to the Debian default desktop install, like we per default install with Usplash, so that it's a nice nicer boot process. We had Dash as the default bash in Edge release already. Um, ETC is automatically kept in SVK, so all changes are automatically committed to the um, version control system that so that you can go back in time and see, uh, change the, uh, see the changes. We, in c we, when we s partition the hard drives, we only use, t um, we, we, we need 15 gigabyte, I think, is the minimum install with the partitioning layout we have. But even, so if, if there's a 200 gigabyte hard drive, we only use this 15%. And then um, the we have different LVN volumes and they get automatically resized um, according to what is used. And since Edge, we also have this Debian Edu doc package, which I will explain a few slides later, um, which is a documentation written in the wiki so that it's easy for, uh, for users to contribute to it. Yeah, um, the it's it's written in on Wiki Debian org. Um, then I re review the commit mails, see that the style of the documentation is kept really as the 
as a manual which fits for fits for ads. Sometimes um, people commit stuff how to make it work in Ubuntu or with, with packages from testing and this stuff I remove usually because it's the edge manual. Um, so I try to keep this documentation focused on edge and now the, no the new one on Lenny. Then um, we use Moin Moin's docbook export to create XML from the wiki, use PO for all to create PO files and then um, translators translate it. That worked really well. Um, the, the French translation came up as a, as a wishlist bug to the package a month ago which had the 100% translated French translation, which was really nice to get. But the documentation is 100 pages, I think, as PDF. And then we create um, HTML and PDF versions from the, from the translations and put it into the Debian Edu doc package. So it's installed on the system and we also install it on a web browser on the internet so that people can read it there. And since October 2007, um, I'm maintaining it and upload it once a month with new, with new translations mostly. Um, yeah, Moin Moin's docbook export is pretty broken. If somebody wants to work on that, that would rock. <laughs> um, the Debian Edu documentation with 100 um, PDF pages creates 2,000 XML errors. We have another document written in the wiki in Norwegian which creates over 10,000 errors on 400 pages. Uh, <laughs> there is now the newer Moin Moin version um, which Franklin Piat has set up. Um, I have not time to test it, but it still creates errors, but less. So. Um, in December 2007, we made a point release, um, fixed 40 bugs in it from wish list to critical, all kinds of bugs, and updated 18 packages after reviewing all the changes, and created new CD and DVD images, which were then extensively tested. And many people um, choose to just install this and wait to skip the R zero release because they, they, they didn't have the need to upgrade immediately. There were no school holidays and they just went to this release. Edge is now in complete bug fix mode. Um, except for the manual, there's not much work on it done because Edge really works nicely. And yeah, that's so this is the overview of packages. Can you read that? Yes. Um, which were not in Debian Edge main. In in that word. What's the next thing? Oh yeah, this yeah, of course. These packages were not included in Edge. Um Uh, the, the Debian Edu packages were not part of Edge because of this bug I will explain later, which we now downgraded so the packages are part in Lenny. And Flash was not in main. We put it in our main because we don't only have main. It's called local in our repository. And the other stuff is um, LVAT and the LTSPA file system so that the SYN clients can access USB sticks. And we have more packages which were modified from Edge um, because we wanted to get bug fixes in which were important to our users but were not important for the enough for the release team to include them in Edge. And so in, in total it's 25 packages and that's this nice percentage. So why, why do we want to be part of 100% part of Debian? Because it's less work and gives better results. <laughs> um, less, less work um, for upgrades and also for the archive maintenance. At the moment there are three people um, maintaining the, up uh, the archive and reviewing newer packages. And we could just spend our time directly in Debian and not do this small fork. Um, I also personally I see Debian why would I, 
as a testbed to do changes in Debian. Um, it was very easy for us to introduce Usplash because it was just a decision between four people. In Debian, it's more like I don't want I want I want to see the kernel messages scrolling. Other people um, just don't care. So um, Debian Edo is good to make changes, but it's doesn't make sense. Um, Debian Edo is an official sub-project from Debian. Um, we, are, we, are, we are a custom Debian distribution. We had 25 developer gatherings, um, mostly in Europe, um, to, to get us know better and to, to discuss things easier, faster. We had 30 Debian De Edo developers working on directly working on Debian Edu packages in the last three years. Though the current core is five to eight people, and there are, have been 115 translators and documentation writers in, since 2001. And of course, we, we also um, have 1,000 Debian developers, which are doing most of the work for us. Um, so in, in Edge, there were nine packages which were not in Debian and 16 we modified. For Lenny we had the goal to have s zero packages differ and I will explain now how the current status, the reality is. But um, first the, the contributions to Debian. Um, there are several um, people who are now Debian developers who started as Debian Edo developers um, learned packaging in Debian Edo and then went through NM. We participate in the CDD effort. Um, Debian or Skole Linux Foundation money was used to fund the kickoff of, of Debian installer and testing security and free Java and GNESH meetings mostly. <coughs> mostly the meetings for Debian installer and testing security also people were paid to work on that. And we developed the preceding for DI and the LTSP packages as they are in Debian now are also the result of Debian Edo work. LTSP is the Linux thin, thin what is it? Terminal server project, um, which is the SYN client software now in use. The development model is the same as Debian. Um, we, we try to have everything in and version control system, we use a bug tracking system, we try to work with upstream, follow licenses, nothing new here. Um, we use a mailing list on listdebian.org. We have several other lists scattered for local support on other um, list servers which has um, historical reasons mostly that people set up the list and people get subscribed there and we never bothered to bring them over. We extensively use wikidebian.org slash Debian Edu. Um, we use an IRC channel and we have an Alios project. Um, we also have the own archive where we have five distributions. We use Sarge, Edge, Edge Test, Lenny, and Lenny Test. The test distributions are what is sit in Debian. So we, at the moment we upload to Lenny Test use this um, and then create CDs for Lenny test so we can get packages much faster in our Lenny because we can directly upload there and test the ch changes faster. Um, edge test and Lenny test are also auto built for the two other architectures we have or we also auto build i386. Um, and packages then need to be manually removed from the test distributions to the non-test distributions and Edge and Sart are untouchable because long released. We also give upload rights to non-DDs within our policies, which are largely the same as Debian. And um, on SVN commits, new CDs are built if, the changes, if there are changes for the CDs, um, CDs and DVDs. So sometimes at the moment we build 15 um, CDs per day because there are 
some changes. Um, for Lenny, um, the Linux dis distribution um, started to deploy um, Debian Edu based in already this summer. They based it on Lenny. They froze Lenny themselves and um, will have to deal with the upgrade pains. <laughs> um, we also have point releases. Um, I'll come to that later. And we have the, the, the numbering issue, which I really have no idea how to solve, except we, we skipped one release, because we called our edge release 3.0 and Debian was 4.0, and I think we should just fix it as fast as possible and just make Debian EDU 5 with the next release. These slides, I reused them, and for the reasons explained later, they are some partly outdated. Um, for technically, we wanted to um, put DNS and L, uh, DNS and DHCP configuration into LDAP so that we can that we can um, edit that with the web browser tool. Um, we want to um, apply our configuration changes in a policy complaint compliant way. This is this three one 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 eight eight bug, which I have three more slides to. Um, one complaint we had is that this fixed network um, setup is very nice for people who don't have a network, but for people who have an existing network, often the IP addresses are wrong, and it's not so easy to change it and to make that easier. Um, then the, the, the workstations um, get the users from LDAP, which works nicely, and get the home directory, the thing with, lap with laptop is you take them away from the LDAP server and then the home directory is gone. And That was the fix. We still haven't done. And the, the other challenge due to Linux is that we now have want to support the GNOME desktop as we support KDE. And we, on we, we got that. This is... So the n our new features, we have, we have a GNOME desktop now. Um, we also have a Sugar desktop. Sugar is the, um, the desktop environment from One Laptop Per Child project. Um, the GNOME desktop is really polished as the KDE one. The Sugar is not working so well. But it's, it's there as the base to work on it next year. Sugar is also not available as default. We used to have um, four for installation options um, or for this main server workstation, thin client server and standalone. And now there is, um, one can select whether GNOME or KDE. That's the question we added. We configured DHCP from LDAP, DNS not yet. Um, that, uh, yeah, the, the de that's new in the Debian DHCP server package that it now takes the, uh, can, can take the configuration from LDAP. We automatically set up a um, PXE um, booting environment for the workstations and the thin clients so they don't um, have to be installed manually with DI anymore, um, but just can um, boot from the network. And we fixed bits of the hard-coded IP setup. So there's now less work to change the network, but there's still it's still not all in one place. We also made some progress on this bug, um, but it's, we haven't fixed it yet. There are too many packages involved. I'm not sure if we decided to use Gnash as the default Flash player. I just didn't follow that. We have free Java, finally. This killer feature is a feature teachers wa really wanted, that the, um, automatically idle users get killed um, after some time. And so we have a killer feature now. <laughs> and of course, we have everything else which is new in Lenny. That's our current diff to Lenny. Um, that's four packages which are newer in Debian Edu than in Lenny, and one, packages which one package which is not in Lenny main. 
um, host policy group as a tool so that um, we can say, okay, we put these these hosts into a into this group and then um, disable network access for them in the firewall, which is used for exam mode when um, students should not access the internet. But as there are, I don't think it's really needed for for a Lenny release, as there are other changes. As as it's not always a use case to have to be able to disable the internet. Also, it's not the only change you need to if you want to make an exam. You also want to have new users for the exam. Otherwise, the students can just put some documentation they shouldn't have in the exam in their home directory. So you need to do other changes for a proper exam mode. And um, this, this famous bug um, is the, we, we don't violate policy by the word. We just violate it in practice <laughs> because um, the Debian ELU config package um, modifies other packages config files but only if you install it and enter either then manually run a script or if, you, if it's part of the Debian installer you choose that CD and by that you choose to run the script. But the effect is that upgrades are sometimes painful because we modify the configuration packages and then they got um, the new changes to the configuration files are not um, propagated to the system. And often our administrators don't want to read the readme DB or the new Debian file to learn about what they have to do at upgrades. So we have this wiki page where all, where the current status of the bug is described and unfortunately we, f we, we started in the b uh, beginning of the linear release process, we worked on that bug and then we somehow forgot it again. And so this was, is the status which was at FOSTEM six months ago. Um, the bugs are mostly make whatever config file automatically configurable, which is nicely solved in Apache with this um, Apache conf D directory where one can just drop a configuration file which gets read but not all packages support this mechanism and this is not only useful to have for Debian Edu but also for other custom customizations and for local changes. I like to just keep the package default and drop my config file there and get used. But this, this bug is nothing um, When we, if, if we can convince the package maintainers, um, then we can solve this bug on our, with the help of the package maintainers and mostly the package maintainers were helpful and just said, we, I would accept the a fix if you send a patch and we haven't done so, so that's our fault. Um, then three weeks ago, I was very happy in the morning when I read that Lenny was frozen and then a few hours later, I was very unhappy when I read SVN commit mails with changes to Debian Edu packages, packages which clearly didn't meet the uh, release team's guidelines about inclusion into Lenny. And that really stopped. I, would, I didn't know what to do because I, I know if... Um, I know that if, if, you don't, if you don't try to achieve your goals, you will not reach them. And there, there we stopped caring, in my opinion. And then the de um, DebConf 8 started and I did other stuff. Um, also, because the, the when, when Lenny was frozen, um, it was still possible to get important bug fixes in not only release critical, but only for a short, shorter time window. And I'm not, I haven't followed Debian release the last two weeks, so I don't know where we are. Um, but there will be a time when only RC bugs will be allowed. And the, the bugs we have, for example, the open elder package doesn't work with TLS and we use TLS per default. And I think this bug should be fixed in Lenny. There's no need that we um, put our own modified open elder package in Debian Edu think this bug should be fixed in, in Lenny. 
Um, so now we have this hack that the Debian edu package in, in install in unstable will add our repository to sources list and then um, so the Debian edu can be installed from main and then uh, if you do up get upgrade um, a new version from our repository is fetched but in my opinion that's just the same solution that we has had with the last release um, that we just have different packages and that has the same problems that we need to maintain the fork, need to up do our own security support when we modify the packages. And that's not really what I think is sensible. And what I said this morning already, I think we should change the policy um, that some packages should be ex are already excluded from the strict freeze guidelines. There's the Debian installer packages, Debian CD, also the kernel. Um, so of course, we need a good working kernel, and in, in, in theory, the kernel should also be just a normal package and follow the, the freeze guidelines, in my opinion, especially the kernel. <laughs> uh, but I think there are other packages which would really benefit if they were excluded from the, the freeze. The Debian edu packages, as they only affect our system, are not used by anything else. The for Fi fully automatic installation, which is just another form of Debian installer. Some meta packages, because um, sometimes um, you have recommends in there, um, which, of which you don't know if the package will reach Lenny or not. So th these are also just packages collections. And artwork packages, I'm not sure if they are fine with the current release cr criteria, but I think um, that Debian should be, mm. or not only um, the the critical bugs be removed, but also Polish more. Um, yeah, that's. I'm. <coughs> I'm. I've been thinking ab um, about the the this this release policy that. Uh, only RC bugs, bug fixes are okay for the release. I think also smaller bugs should be fixable with defined procedures. Um, I'm aware that every bug fix, every change can bring regressions. Um, and I know that the release team doesn't scale to review um, all the um, diffs, but I think it's, it's very strange to release with small bugs which which are easy to fix. Why doesn't this work anymore? <coughs> no, my monitor is fine. Yeah. Ah, in the morning. I, s on I think I'm done anyway, yeah. That was the last slide anyway. Yeah. Um, the other issue I see with, with Debian Edo that um, in our point release, as I said in the beginning, we um, included more bug fixes, also these minor bug fixes, um, because they were important to our users. And I think it would be good for Debian to do something like that. We did this with Lenny and a half a bit for certain packages. Um, I, there are several ways or several thoughts how to um, make Debian more attractive for end users. One is, is also, another one is this um, testing security thing that you can install testing and have a supported release. The other way is this cut approach from Joey Hess. I think a third way is to allow more fixes for smaller bugs in edge or in stable. Um, because you you just notice very low hanging fruits which you can fix and it's I think it's a pity that it's sometimes not fixed. <coughs> See we have five minutes left. Um, do you have, I would like to hear your comments, suggestions, comments. Microphone.
do you think that it will be ever realistic to just use the Debian archive without any local archive for yourself? I certainly hope so. <laughs> I, I, why don't you think it cannot be possible? Um, I mean, you you have a special client base with special needs. So, um, do you do you think it will be possible to uh, just use Lenny plus one and the archive, and then uh, get your fixes into every point release and stuff like that? Do you think that's realistic? And yeah, or doesn't that create uh, does that create uh, more yeah more does doesn't it uh, take more resources to get this accepted in debian than to maintain your diff repository for your local changes our changes are mostly this installation changes and a bit of branding mm -hmm. and a, a selection of packages but we don't modify any core packages. We, we, we modified um, for KDE some translation updates, but I think these translations updates are also useful in Debian to have fixed translations if they are there in a point release. Hello. Uh, I have a n totally non-serious question. Do you have any interesting stories about students hacking your system to circumvent your exam protection and things like that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Care to share? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, has there been already some serious discussion about this? I mean, I... I uh, haven't followed Debian release all the time and Debian devil during uh, the Lenny uh, release process, but was um, do you like have a statement from the release team what they think about that or is that just at the moment like a thing we should discuss or was this discussed? Uh, it was a bit discussed at Fostem where I already brought this up this morning where I brought up this idea of other packages like the, um, to have less strict um, freeze guidelines, only one member of the release team was in this room, and that member didn't want to comment. Well, uh, I'm the Debian release manager. Uh, um, first, I want to clarify that uh, meta packages and uh, artwork uh, improvements are definitely um, accepted uh, in the freeze. So um, if you know of them, just uh, send a freeze exception uh, request. Um, for uh, Debian Edu uh, and Spy packages, um, I cannot say that they are just uh, exempted of the freeze, but uh, please uh, do try with uh, Freeze exception request mails, and we will look into them. Good, thanks. Um, Frank, I, I just want to uh, come back to your question uh, uh, because you seem to doubt that it's possible to be 100%. It is what I also told in my talk. And is, is there any specific reason you think it would be uh, not a good idea to do? Um, not really, but um, I think um, if you have a, I, j I'm, I was just wondering if you have a special client base and want to have a fix for them, uh, and I was just wondering whether the the um, removed flexibility you get when you only rely on Debian stable. Uh, isn't in some cases uh, uh, not worth, uh, it's worth, uh, it might be worth the effort to have some mechanism to update single packages without having go 
to uh, the stable release team in Debian uh, or stuff. I mean, for security fixes uh, and uh, like that, it's obviously good to have them uh, come from upstream so that everyone bef benefits from them. But uh, yeah, but maybe that's just a, a preconception uh, coming from the somewhat painful experiences in the last few ye um, last years that Debian had with this stable release process and the point releases, where it had several times severe problems with releasing point releases and uh, stuff like that. So maybe Debian can change in a way that it is possible. At the moment, I don't see it possible, L like the current process that we have, but maybe Debian should change and not you. That could be the answer to my question, but I was just posing it. <laughs> My opinion on this is, yes, Debian should change and should be more flexible, yes, it is one point. But the other point is, if you look at the target audience, what do you think, how often the installation in the school might change? Uh, teachers do not want any change, at least this is my uh, experience. And um, <coughs> this is one point, and uh, the other point is, if there is some uh, change in the school, it is in a kind of a yearly period to make one school year and so. And I have, especially in, in this target group, not real problems with this. And there are other target groups which also are afraid to change anything. So stable is completely fine for, for me. I think so too. That I run stable on my laptop or my, my, my desktop since 12 years and I'm usually very fine with it. And schools especially, they don't want changes. Bug, I think everybody wants bug fixes. <laughs> so I think Debian needs to change and Debian Edu needs to change. I'm a bit confused about the time because th there were two people holding up signs and pr according to one the time is over and according to the others there's eight minutes left or five. T <laughs> takes the time you'd like more. <laughs> In the back, be that one. I'm just curious, Holter, if you run stable on your notebook, how do you watch video <laughs> streams from this event with it? <laughs> <laughs> I use VLC, and I use the XORG back port to have X run R. <laughs> uh, the truth comes out. <laughs> For anyone who cares, I run unstable and experimental on mine, so. <laughs> this is the reason why your le uh, HP laptop really works? <laughs> um, actually, regarding Frank's question, I'm quite happy with the answer because I would be, um, I would have been fairly disappointed if, basically, you had said that Debian AD can't be in Debian because it would have meant Debian is not flex flexible enough to be customized for specific purpose. And having a positive answer is good news. Having a what? A positive answer saying that it should be possible to get 100% of Debian Edu in Debian means Debian is still flexible enough or can be. Yeah, I think Debian Edu is in a lot of ways just Debian polished. And I think it's a pity that we, can't, we are not able to manage polished Debian as much. It's Okay, if there are no more questions, then I thank you for your, for your listening and see you around. <laughs>